Hey guys, welcome back. It's me, Bitter Steel here, with another video for Hearts of Iron 4. What will we be doing today? Well, many of you have requested a playthrough as the United States of America. Specifically, you want to see my take on Georgia on my mind, so that is what I will bring you. And because I love efficiency, let's also combine a few other achievements there. Not only will we be gathering up a bunch of Georgias, we will be going for Two Arms in Dixie, where we rise up as the South, Underpaid, Under Eft, and Under Eisenhower, where we assume faction leadership of the Allies and hope over 50 expeditionary divisions from the United Kingdom. Fun fact, that achievement description is totally wrong and you just need to be a faction leader with troops from the UK. So we'll, we'll see. And if I can bear to play that long, Arsenal of Democracy, where we need to have over 300 military factories. Sounds good, let's go. Obviously, we'll play as the United States. We'll leave it on Iron Man mode, because achievements. And historical AI focuses on, because I like to know what the AI is going to do, or at least what it's supposed to do. But first, if you like these videos, leave a like and hit me up in the comments telling me what you want to see me try next. Maybe a cool challenge, maybe some achievements you're having trouble with. I'm always open to some more suggestions. Also consider subscribing and hitting that bell icon. That way you'll be notified whenever I upload more content. Other than that, we have a very cool and active Discord community. I'll leave links to that down in the description below. And if you're one of those people who likes Twitter, I also have a Twitter. You can find the link for that in the description as well. But enough rambling, on to the video. And that brings us to the United States of America. Truly a giant. First things first, the military. Fun fact, these are very disloyal troops and they will leave us at the first sign of trouble. But until then, we'll just put them in Washington and exercise them until roughly 10 army experience. Military production. Let's start out with changing out carrier fighters for now into regular closed air support. CAS is king. Then we'll put five factories on towed artillery and three on infantry equipment. This will give us a nice stockpile of artillery to work with and it will fill our infantry equipment needs. Later on we will be adding other airplanes to this, trucks, tanks, the works, but for starters this is fine. Y you have the economy later in the game to just build whatever you like really fill out these production lines for ships that way they get built quicker now as for this naval stuff just fill out the uh, production queue that way they get built quicker i personally will not go into naval stuff i'm not that great at the naval part of the game i'm sure there's something out there on youtube that can help you with that i wish i could but i'm an idiot research we have a lot of research slots and we'll still get another one uh pretty much all we have to do is stay up to date with your engineering your industry and then do whatever you like i like to stick with land doctrines because they take quite a while and uh then you invest in the infantry or support companies you have the research slots and the production capacity to work on tanks work on airplanes you might even be interested in some naval stuff like i said i'm not going to but hey you have the option. Now for focuses. Where we want to go is re-establish the gold standard. However, we can't because FDR has to go. So we need to wait until the election, which is still a bit off. So instead, we'll head for the War Department and work our way down to escort fighters. This will allow us to have a very early heavy fighter twos, which will be a nice edge in the upcoming struggles. And then construction. Now this is a tricky one. The way we're going to play this US, we will have ourselves a nice civil war, which means the South shall rise again and we'll have to fight the constitutionalists. The areas where you need to concentrate your construction are the Rust Belt. They will stick with us if we do the right focuses and the historical South. So Kentucky, I believe, is, in is not included. So anything, uh, so Virginia, Tennessee, Arkansas, Oklahoma, and anything south of that should stick with you as well. Now, there's a second problem here. We are stuck on undisturbed isolation. Yeah, have a look at those bonuses, boys. Yeah, great, aren't they? We will be stuck with this for a bit, so that makes construction a bit iffy. What I like to do is build some infrastructure in places that have good resources, and then once that infrastructure is built, I follow up with a few civvies, not too many, just like four should do, and then start building mills. Mills will be required. The few that we have are not enough to feed the war machine. Now, this is not set in stone. You can build other things. This is just my personal preference, but I do recommend you build in places 
places that you know will stick with you. So avoid anything near New England and uh, let's see Maryland, Pennsylvania. This entire area is to be avoided as well as California and the entire west coast essentially. Now for the navy, nothing fancy here. Just find all your ships and put them together in one big giant fleet. I like to park them somewhere near Virginia and set them to naval exercising. Get yourself some naval XP. Makes research go quicker if you're into that. I might dabble and it just uh, makes it easier to reorganize the fleets at a later date. While you're doing that, might as well do the same with the Air Force. Just pick up every land-based aircraft, park them in the big airfield in Virginia and organize from there. So that's the initial setup done. Let's go. Set the speed to max and we'll see where this ends up. Now before we proceed, two things I forgot to mention. One, don't pick a focus just yet. Before you unpause, go into your decisions and start a small lobbying effort. This will put your PP gain to a negative once you pick a focus, but it will start work on Senate and House support, which are important for the US. With that done, we can take the War Department and head down to Escort Fighters, or if you're more into it, you can pick Selective Training Act or Two Ocean Navy Act, doesn't really matter. I just like getting these escort fighters early. And two, because I'm going for those escort fighters, I will work on heavy fighter ones immediately. And after that, dedicate a full slot to just doctrine, military doctrine. I'm also going to switch all these army units over to the basic infantry division. Yes, we're short a lot of equipment, but that's fine. I just need the experience and uh, I just really like having a well-organized, standardized army. For focuses, we're still on the war department. Like I said, I will head for escort fighters. If you're more into the Selective Training Act or the Two Ocean Navy Act, that's your deal. Air War Plans Division is next. Now throughout the campaign, do a few of these small lobbying efforts. You don't need that many of them if you're going with the Confederate path, but you need a couple just to get house support high enough to take a few focuses, mostly the ones around Adjusted Compensation Act and down. And the big one here, the War Powers Act, requires quite a bit of support, so keep an eye on that. Until we get rid of the Great Depression though, our PP gain will be awful. Now in terms of our industry, we could pick Concentrated for that factory output bonus, or we could pick Dispersed for that retention and efficiency and that base efficiency. It doesn't really matter for a country like the US, we're more than powerful enough just outproduce anyone regardless of whatever path we take so i will take concentrated industry here just to get that big factory output that also affects construction so the more construction we get done before the confederacy rises up the stronger we can be all right the air war plans division's done let's keep going get ourselves air support and with the p38 lightning done we now wait until we get the p47 thunderbolt so meanwhile Let's dedicate one slot to Doctrine. I like to work on Doctrines. They make all the difference in land combat. Now as industry and infrastructure in the Rust Belt area finishes, now I do realize we take a massive, massive penalty to construction until we get rid of this undisturbed isolation here. Just, just look at those penalties. But it will be well worth it just to have a little bit more industry to go into the next stage. And with air support done, get our escort fighters and with that we should be able to get this 1940 heavy fighter 2 the p47 thunderbolt around 1937 which is going to be great to decimate the enemy meanwhile like i said keep an eye out for these small lobbying efforts just to keep your house and senate support up pp gain will be awful until we get rid of the great depression and we can hire the silent workhorse now as for research there's nothing fancy other than that big old fighter 2 that we will be going for just make sure to stay on top of the engineering the industry and whatever equipment you need really the US has plenty of research slots and plenty of time to get everything done that you want. And that's Escort Fighters done. It's now October of 36 and I believe in November the elections happen. So we'll not pick a national focus. We are just going to let that political power flood in until we are ready to take the gold standard. We are ready though to take the P-47 Thunderbolt now. 271 days. So in 37 we'll have a 1940s. Heavy fighter. We now also have 10 army experience, so we can stop the exercises. Well, uh, let them exercise until rank 3. That way we have some elite units. At least this way we'll waste less equipment, because oh boy, we need a lot of equipment. Eventually. There we go, the elections of 1936. For the purpose of going with the Confederacy, it's important we pick the Republicans here. This is not a political statement, this is purely from a gameplay perspective. We need the Republicans because that unlocks the gold standard focus. 
So the Republicans, we must safeguard the ideals of the American system. People have spoken and we can now re-establish the gold standard. We have chosen our path. Now, as for our political power, there are two options here. One, we immediately take the silent workhorse, which will be my preferred route. Or two, we hoard our political power until we go further down the tree that unlocks this guy, the demagogue. If you pick the silent workhorse, there's a bit more build up before we can make the confederacy, but we'll go into it stronger and we'll come out of it stronger. If we pick the demagogue, we will be able to rush the confederacy considerably faster. However, the ensuing civil war will be more challenging and will come out of it significantly weaker. So I'll leave the choice to you. Personally, I will take the silent workhorse. And again, Keep lobbying to get House and Senate support up. As far as free dockyards are concerned, there's really no need to build more ships. Whenever you finish what's in the queue at the game start, and you combine that with your existing navy, you'll be more than powerful enough to take on anyone in the world. Personally, I don't play the naval game that much. I just build submarines whenever I need a naval superiority. But the US Navy is more than powerful enough to get naval dominance to invade Japan or the UK or anyone for that matter. So I will not be going into naval detail from this point on. I'm just going to build convoys. And we have re-established the gold standard. Let's go for America first. I've, I've seen this before, I swear. This will lead towards the silver shirts, but we're still locked out of that until we can get that demagogue and a little bit more support for the silver legion. Now to proceed, we'll need a lot of PP. We need 150 to get that demagogue in, and our gain is, well, let's admit it, it's terrible. Best way to improve that will be to rush for the Adjusted Compensation Act next, start fixing that Great Depression. Like I said, this path is a little bit slower than just rushing for the demagogue, but we'll come out of this a lot stronger. I think it's worth the trade off and as military factories start flowing in because we're either building them for our own sake or to convince some senators assign them wherever you like to fix your equipment deficits it's not that important our economy will be more than powerful enough just at the start focus on guns artillery and support equipment anything else can go towards some close air support or those new fighters that we're working on now as for the military when we do side with the confederacy we will lose most of the good generals and field marshals that's why i have chosen Maurice Rose as our new field marshal because he has a brilliant strategist trait making him an excellent offensive field marshal and we know he sticks with us. Ideally I would have chosen Douglas MacArthur but we have other plans for Mr. MacArthur. As for our normal general I have chosen, where is he, Courtney Hodges here because well he is the highest ranking general that sides with the confederates. He's got some good traits, nice attack and very good supply. Now as for positioning the army I suggest drawing a fallback line along the edges of Pennsylvania and down into Maryland just so you can cover both Washington and Baltimore. That way when the um, inevitable civil war fires we are in position to immediately strike back at the enemy. The states that we will lose will be first New England followed by New York, Pennsylvania, Maryland and New Jersey. So this lump here will also lose the entire west coast all the way down to I believe Montana and the Dakotas will side with the enemy as well. We will pretty much be stuck with the Rust Belt and the old confederate states. I think Minnesota and the Dakotas side with the enemy as well. But don't worry, you'll see. We'll see in the future. Alrighty, we have finished America first and I would ideally pick Adjusted Compensation Act but we are a few representatives short, or rather senators. And while we are doing a bit of lobbying, that will not be enough to get us the 49 we need. No, we will be at 46, so three senators away. We'll just pick the Extend the Chinese Exclusion Act which will give us a nice amount of support instead it's another 70 days tacked on but it's better than nothing this should give us the support we need to pick the adjusted compensation act and start working towards ally with the silver shirts like i said this path is a little slower but it will make you so much more powerful as for construction we've managed to build up the infrastructure to the max in the rust belt and i will start building military factories in those areas now uh, follow up with more infrastructure elsewhere if there's time and the occasional uh, civilian factory here and there now with the army trained and in position it's also time to make a couple of changes they are all of the infantry division template so we'll change that we'll simply switch out two infantry battalions for two artillery battalions creating a basic 7-2 20 combat with division. It's not great, but versus the AI, it's more than competent and it gives us something to work with in future. There we go, we have extended the Chinese Exclusion Acts and we can now get adjusted compensation. This will start fixing our Great Depression debuff and giving us a lot more political power, or at least a little more political power gain. That will 
get us ready to go with the silver shirts. We need a lot more PP. And we can make heavy fighter twos in 1937. Not bad. And the Adjusted Compensation Act is done. That has removed our Great Depression and replaced it with Slow Recovery. Still terrible, but a little bit less terrible. We're not ready to ally the Silver Shirts yet, so on to the Labor Management Relations Act. As you can see, we have a lot more support in the Senate and the House now. We should have no trouble working through focuses. I'm also going to start making an intelligence agency, but this is not required. It's just something I like to play around with. But hey, 150 PP, we can now hire. Our demagogue, Charles Coughlin. Coughlin? Coughlin? Doesn't matter. Now, we're not quite there yet. We need 5% more support for the Silver Legion before we can ally with the Silver Shirts. So, protectionist tariffs first. This will make our country a little bit more powerful as another depuff disappears or is lessened. We'll get slow recovery instead of slow economic growth. Slowly crawling our way out of that hellhole. Now we have another 50 PP, and we could get the editor here. 5% stability, which is going to be handy in future, and another 5% PP gain. We still have some time before the Confederacy rises up, so I don't think it's a problem to pick him now. From this point on, though, we will be saving all of our political power until future events. There we go, protectionist tariffs done. Now we can ally with the Silver Shirts. This will set us on the path, as you can see here. This will move us closer to a civil war. A few moments later. And there we go, we ally with the Silver Shirts and instant protests in the capital. The people don't like this. Now, when will the civil war occur? The event chain will start when we reach 30% support for the Silver Legion. So we still have some ways to go. Now, before 30% happens, we have some things to do. We must work our way towards honor the Confederacy. Now, the left branch here will improve your industry and the right branch here will give you some military advantages. I highly recommend, cannot stress this enough how incredibly important it is, rush towards work with the Bund. This will ensure the loyalty of the Rust Belt. You know that place where we build all our industry? That's an area we cannot afford to lose. We have to rush towards work with the Bund. Following work with the Bund, we'll pick up the Free Corps because that will give us a lot of free units. Units we will need. You are to stand any chance against the Constitutionalists. So pick up the focuses on the right side here and then you can work on the left. We'll start with foreign support first. The reason why we'll need all those uh, free infantry divisions is because over half the army will desert. I believe we have 36 divisions now. We'll be lucky if we can get to keep 11 of them. Meanwhile, the enemy will spawn with uh, around 60 event troops and they'll take whatever units that you lose. So they will be significantly more powerful than you in the early stages. I have to take any advantage that we can. All right, invite foreign support done onto Lindbergh. Send him off to Germany. This has unlocked a few things in our tree here. Can now invite donations from German and Italian sources. 25 PP for an off-map civilian factory. Fair deal. Oh well, the Italians refused. Still, Germans said yes. And this gave us access to a few more things like getting German weapons, training camps, etc. Most of these aren't worth it. If you find yourself with a very large deficit of equipment, maybe the German weapons could be worth it. Fortunately for us, we have solved most of those problems. We will lose most of this equipment though. All right, Lindbergh's off. Now for work with the Bund and recruit the Free Corps. Once those two are done, we'll be in a decent position for what's coming. Meanwhile, we're still banking political power. This will come in handy later. There we go. This is the event that marks our 30% support for the Silver Legion. The 10 million march. From this point on, there's no stopping it. We will have ourselves a nice little civil war and the Confederacy will rise again. Fortunately, the Bund is almost ready and we should have enough time to get the Free Corps as well. Let's get that free core in as quickly as possible. From now on, negative events will pop up that will remove stability, remove equipment from your stockpile, you will lose manpower, and you will get strikes that completely cripple your economy. All this will lead up to a big old rebellion in Boston, as is tradition for the United States. Now, even though I know that things are coming to a civil war, I'm not recruiting any new units because I know most will side with the enemy. We'll recruit units once things have actually started, and until then, we'll just sit here and stare angrily at Boston. Damn you, Boston. Fortunately, we have the Free Corps as well, so that's the two important focuses done. Let's head down the left path towards the Confederacy now. 12 seconds later. 
There we go, this is the big event, the Boston Rebellion. So, the Democrats have started up a little civil war here. Fortunately, the Midwest has declared for us, that means we still have control of the Rust Belt. Very important. Now, a little bit of organization. We managed to hold on to 10 divisions of the regular army. Not a lot, but we did manage to acquire 48 divisions of, uh, call them citizen militias. And let's get these boys in position. One of those citizen militia groups will be forming a line from north to south uh, somewhere along these mountain ridges and on the border between the Dakotas and Montana Wyoming that should be a good position to hold any advances from the west the other army can draw a line somewhere around Philadelphia towards Buffalo now when Pennsylvania and New York rise up these units will end up being encircled that's not a big problem though because they should be able to hold on to the port in Philadelphia and the regular army will quickly close from behind. Volunteers, always welcome. Now whatever's left in our stockpile has to be used to recruit a few divisions, only troops. I'll also take the speed way down and see what plays out. I don't recommend setting a front line here yet. We still need to wait for New York, Pennsylvania, New Jersey and Maryland to rise up against us as well. So the in, the front lines will change a lot. So just, just wait until those have happened. One thing we can do though, since we're now at war, is to go up to partial mobilization. And we'll also start raising the Silver Legions. These are even worse militia units, but numbers are what's going to win this. And we'll start deploying them somewhere to the north. As I know Minnesota is going to rise up against us, maybe even Iowa. So I'll put them around Chicago and there go the west yep california and there goes the entire east coast so they've all risen up against us fortunately we were more or less in position now we can draw our definitive front lines offensive and push towards boston regular troops can clean up this big old pocket here push aggressively we should start to see some actual resistance popping up soon by the time those troops reach us we'll already have taken many many victory points we already have them on the ropes so we've managed to push up to New York before they've even managed to respond. Now in the west, I recommend not removing these troops and trying to push west. We still lose these states as well. They'll pop uh, up in a little rebellion later, as well as this portion of the Midwest around Minnesota and the two Dakotas, those rise up as well. So I have these troops here in reserve. There we go, that's the northwest, this entire area. Oh, well, this is nice. The West Midwest declares for us, heroes one and all. Usually the area around Minnesota rises up against us. Apparently this time they didn't. I'll take it. That's very nice because that gives us an edge. An edge I am more than willing to take. Oh, there goes the Southwest. Not too bad. Decent front lines, something we can hold. Can immediately start pushing. They shouldn't have too many troops on the West Coast anyway. Just advance as far as possible. Meanwhile, clean up this. This is where the majority of the enemy army is located. And here we have that other very fun event, MacArthur offers to lead the government. This essentially allows us to make MacArthur a little bit of a dictator. Desperate times do call for desperate measures. And now I have Douglas MacArthur, the American Caesar. He has some very nice traits, especially division attack and defense on core territory, which will be helpful, but more importantly, big discounts on army staff. So let's hire some guys. That's why we saved up this political power so we can go on a spending spree now. now looking at the troops, I think we are about evenly matched in terms of numbers, but we have the industry. We can replenish those losses much quicker than than the constitutionalists can and because we positioned our troops strategically we have a massive advantage over them we're already pushing them towards boston once the east falls the west should pose no problem and will come out of this much stronger than before now it is already 1939 but that's fine i think it's well worth it to postpone this civil war by about a year than it is to just rush in there and come out of it incredibly weak at least this way it will be a force to be reckoned with once this is all over Ooh, that's a nice encirclement. Uh, let's see, four divisions. Yeah, nine divisions cut off. That's the death blow for the constitutionalists. No doubt about it. They're not coming back from this.
Meanwhile in the west, we're cleaning up very nicely. If we're looking at casualties, I'd say we're doing just fine. One eternity later. Ugh, this drive westward is the harshest part of this because it's all mountainous terrain. It's incredibly bad to push through and we don't really have excellent divisions. So yeah, it's a suffering. It's a lot of suffering. It's costing us equipment here. It's costing us a lot of equipment. Just gotta take Los Angeles. I think that should be enough to capitulate them. And that's it. It's over. I still got some good stuff there. Unfortunately, doing this will lose you the Philippines, but uh, then again, it, it does free you from your entanglements with Japan, so you don't have to worry about the Japanese from now on. Now, our next order of business will be to finish Honor the Confederacy. This will unlock a series of decisions that will allow us to go full Confederate States of America, allowing us to join the Axis. Once we do that, we'll be able to take out the UK and go from there. Taking out the UK will allow us to get ourselves another Georgia and it will set us up for the Eisenhower achievement because contrary to what the description says we just need to get 50 divisions from the United Kingdom and be a faction leader. So uh, how about we just puppet them? Meanwhile let's update this division. We'll make a duplicate. Call this 14-4 so I know what it is. It'll be the elites and we'll simply make these 14 infantry battalions with four artillery battalions. Just a double of what the regulars are. These will be our shock troops and this will be what we use to invade the United Kingdom. We'll convert one army to these guys and these will be the troops that land. We we'll need to massively ramp up our production of equipment though. Oof, we need a lot more stuff. Fortunately our economy is now incredibly powerful. So we'll start churning out military factories. This will move us closer to arsenal of democracy as well and uh, it shouldn't be too long. About six months I reckon for our army to be ready to take on the UK. All right, honor the Confederacy done. That should unlock some decisions here. Let's take all of these to start improving our country slightly. Good thing we saved up a political power. All right, now we just need to permit Confederate battle standards and constitutional convention, and that should flip us to the Confederate States of America. So while we wait for that political power, we can start producing a truckload of infantry equipment, as that was a costly invasion of the West Coast. God, I hate these mountains. Meanwhile, we can take the Selective Training Act to get ourselves a bit more manpower. We are running rather low, and a free limited conscription is not bad. Now, as far as focuses are concerned, the good ones are hidden behind the War Powers Act, and there's some more nice stuff over here underneath income tax reform. However, you'll need to work with Senate and House support. While we work towards that, might as well get the Two Ocean Navy Act, naval dockyards, not a bad deal. So remember to just keep pushing these uh, small lobbying efforts, you really need that House support. Oh, whenever Mexico nationalizes its oil, uh, choice is yours, you could just invade its free real estate, we'll probably join the allies though, or you can simply embargo them and wait for a better deal. I'm gonna embargo them, I have no interest in fighting them just yet, I want to be as prepared as possible to take on the UK. Okay, 100 pp, that's the final decision we can take. Constitutional convention, this will switch us to the Confederate States of America. And we are now firmly under the control of the Silver Legion of America. This gives us options, namely, we can ask to join the Axis. We'll not join their wars just yet, we'll just use this opportunity to ship our troops across towards one of their ports around Wilhelmshaven, it's a good, good place. Park the troops there. Gonna add a few divisions to that army, I want 24. And ship those troops across. Meanwhile, keep building up those stockpiles. We have a huge deficit from switching over those templates. Once you're pretty much out of the red, that's a good time to strike at the Allies. Another fun event here, William Dudley Pelly challenges Douglas MacArthur. You have a choice here, we either get William Dudley Pelly as our national leader, no idea who that is, not that interested in him. We can have Lindbergh take over, that could be cool, but personally I want to stick with the American Caesar, the Republic still needs him, we'll keep MacArthur. Along with the army, I'm gonna ship the Air Force over as well. We'll be getting ready to strike at the enemy soon. Fortunately, at the conclusion of that war, we got the entire Navy back. Gonna need to use it to take out the Royal Navy. And we'll send all these boats over to Emden, or Wesser Ems as well. Wilhelmshaven, that's the place. All right, naval invasion's ready to kick off. Let's ask the Germans nicely if we can join in their little war. Should say yes, take the speed way down. And the naval invasions are off. Let's also check Canada and start offensives against the Canadians. Should be having no issues pushing out from here. All right, this naval landing shouldn't be too much of a problem. Let's get the Air Force in support. So I'm gonna get rid of these front lines. I wanna do this manually. Now we quickly and aggressively expand.
Alright, the first goal is complete, we've cut the United Kingdom in half. We will now push upwards aggressively, taking all of the north, and in our advance south we will be careful not to actually take London. We will encircle it without capturing it and then take the rest of the country. This will prevent the United Kingdom from capitulating, but they will also no longer be a threat. That way we will get our participation up as high as possible by grinding against Canada and just taking the rest of the islands. Alrighty, we have London more or less surrounded. Now let's clean up the rest of the country without taking the capital. A few inches later. Alright, we have taken almost all of the home islands. Just need to capture London. And, well, Canada is pretty much ours as well. I think it's time to close this. How's our participation looking? 33%. Yeah, we're not going to get this much higher. But still, it should get us a nice slice of UK Indian swing peace deal. So let's just take London. Ooh. 13 divisions to destroy. Not bad. There we go. Big old peace deal. United Kingdom has capitulated and we get a very nice slice of the pie. So first things first, take South Georgia. We are an avid collector of Georgias, so we need our Georgias. Next up, I'm make some puppets. What I like to do is take all states, unselect London, and then hit puppet and then manually remove all other states. That way we puppet the United Kingdom in London and we'll feed them stuff in the next turn. So that concludes the peace deal. What did we manage to get out of this? Most importantly, we got south of Georgia. So that's two Georgias down, one to go. Secondly, the British Empire is our puppet and they are quite large. I managed to secure most of their old territory. So I've got the home islands, I've got most of Africa, a bunch of islands. I didn't go for anything in Southeast Asia because Japan is going to start doing things there. And we also got the Raj. Oh, and before I forget, the Canadians are on our side now as well. Things are looking quite well. We are well on track for a couple of achievements and it's only 1940. We need one more Georgia to round out the set. We have already finished two arms in Dixie. Arsenal of democracy is just a matter of building more military factories, maybe integrating the UK. Team America, not sure if I'm gonna go for that one. That usually just, it just takes forever. To get nuclear research done and then there's just underpaid under sexton under eisenhower we just need to be a faction leader and have the uk send us 50 expeditionary divisions so we just need to wait for the uk to build 50 divisions fortunately they are large enough that they should be able to actually make troops our next georgia will have to come from the soviet union this georgia no this georgia so let's prepare to invade. The Germans are gonna come kicking down the door, so we wanna get in on that action. Start moving my army to Berlin, keep production going, and get the navy in position. Probably need to uh, do some naval escorts in the Baltics, so we can land near Leningrad and push out from there. So what do we do while we wait for Barbarossa to kick off? Well, it's simple. We build more stuff, more military factories, more infrastructure, more military factories, more infrastructure. We're already up to 140 military factories, but I think we can do better. And once these invasions are prepared, we'll strike against the USSR. They don't stand a chance. Let's get in on this Italian-Soviet war then, shall we? I'll take the game speed down a little. Looks like our landings go entirely unopposed. Yep. Just gonna delete these front lines. I hate them. Ferry the rest of the army across and quickly expand. And drive south to Moscow. And we'll be devoting a lot of our... Uh, industry to building up Russian infrastructure behind us as we advance.
it would appear we have changed name. We are now the Free American Empire for some reason. Uh, sure. Okay, I'll take it. Doesn't matter, I guess. So yeah, if you're worried about fighting Russia, don't be. Just draw a field marshal order and set it to go. Three armies are more than enough to take down whatever they have. Just make sure that you get yourself some logistics companies and, uh, well, build up some infrastructure behind you as you go. So make sure that your troops don't run out of equipment. One hour later. Meanwhile, we're up to 228 factories, so Arsenal of Democracy is creeping within sight. We've almost pushed to the Urals, so our participation should be just perfect. 46%. Yep, yeah, we are well ahead of the others. And we have control of Georgia, so it won't be a problem taking that either. So we are well on our way to completing Arsenal of Democracy and Georgia on my mind. Now for underpaid, undersexed and under Eisenhower, we need to find a way to get out of the Axis. And I think that's going to require defeating China. But we've got time. It's only 1941. And there goes the Soviet Union. But hey, let's uh, start things off by taking Georgia and we'll puppet the Soviet Union. Okay, so that was a pretty good run. Oh no, oh, I may have done some bad things with that peace deal. Anyway, we do have Georgia on our mind complete. As the United States of America, we own and fully control all three Georgias. So that's the Georgia and the Caucasus, South Georgia down here, and regular old Georgia, where are you? Georgia in the US. So that is Georgia on my mind, complete. Now I hate this border gore, so I'm just gonna turn these provinces back over to the USSR. Now for Arsenal of Democracy, we're about 30 military factories off. We'll get that easily. We just need to take care of the Chinese now so we can get out of this faction. So we gotta redeploy our armies to the more inhospitable places of the world. But this is the last bit of the journey. Well, unless you're really keen on nuking Paris, but ugh, it just takes so long to get nuclear weapons. Two thousand years later. Oh, there we go. Finally, China gave up. This peace deal is irrelevant. You can do what you want here, uh, but all in all, eh, pretty irrelevant. There we go. That's that peace deal done, which means there's no more fighting going on. Finally, leave the Axis. There we go. We'll make our own faction. There. That's a much better faction. Okay. Now, all that we have to do now is request 50 troops from the UK. Request 50 divisions, and they will always accept because they're a puppet. Et voila. We have finished. Underpaid, undersexed, and under Eisenhower. As the USA, we have assumed faction leadership and have over 50 expeditionary divisions from the UK. Oh, wait, I just asked for 50. I need to ask for a few more. That's 59 divisions. There, that'll do. And again, I'm going to repeat this. I know that the achievement says as the USA assume leadership of the Allies and have over 50 expeditionary divisions from the UK, but that's very misleading. All that's required for the achievement to fire is to be a faction leader and have troops from the United Kingdom. So, a little recap here. We have finished, first and foremost, Georgia on my mind, then Arsenal of Democracy, a little bit of two arms in Dixie sprinkled in, and we finished up with underpaid, undersexed, and under Eisenhower. I'd say that's a pretty good run for the US, and it's still only 1942, so you're very well positioned if you want to take this into a world conquest game. Now, I didn't do Team America because I don't want to play that long. It will take forever to research nuclear weapons, only just to drop one on Paris. It's not something I want to do now. Feel free to if that's your jam. Now I hope you've enjoyed this video. I don't play the US that often so if I made mistakes or if I do things that are very inefficient let me know in the comments. I'm always looking to learn. If you like the video leave a like. Consider subscribing if you want to see more content like this and check out the channel for some other guides and achievement videos. And once more I want to leave a massive shout out to my Patreon supporters. It's people like you who make this possible because oh my god Adobe software costs an arm and a leg. But for now this has been me. Bitter Steel, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.